Hello. You electric child of God. Welcome to Bible Bedtime. I'm your host. My name is Dana, and in this podcast, I read a full chapter of the Bible in a way that I hope will help you fall asleep in heavenly peace. In this sixth season of Bible Bedtime, we are reading through the six books of the Old and New Testaments. We've already gone through Joshua, and now we are reading through Romans. After I finish the chapter, I then read a selection from the book of Psalms, and we finish each episode with the Lord's Prayer and my own special prayer of dedication. Now, I do have to apologize for this episode coming out a little late. As I told you in the last episode, I was out of town for several days visiting family. And it was a wonderful trip. (laughs) I had many adventures. My sister and I took our elderly mother to the Washington, D.C. area to visit her brother, my uncle. And while we were there, we got to see my cousins and their families. And it had been about seven years since we had seen each other. I was amazed and blessed and honestly thrilled that my cousins walked in and after seven years of not seeing each other, we picked up as though it had only been a day since we had seen each other and their children were delightful and personable and we laughed and we cried and we sang. It was such a blessing. I had I had the brilliant idea to rent a car while we were there to help my mother. She's elderly and doesn't get around real well. I wanted to rent a car to make things a little easier. And I thought it would be adventurous to rent an electric car. I don't have an electric car. I had never driven an electric car. And I thought it would be memorable to do so. It was incredibly memorable. (laughs) I made the mistake of believing that Every charging station I saw on the map would be a public charging station that would be in order. A very long story short, I had my mother, my sister, my daughter, and my niece all in the car trying to go back to our hotel and We looked for charging station after charging station after charging station. We were all tired and at about two o'clock in the morning near downtown Washington, D.C., the electric car finally ran out of power. Now we were able to get a ride back to our hotel and the next day we were able (laughs) to go back and get the car and get it charged up and the trip carried on without another mishap but in the meantime we had lots of tension we had some tears we had some yelling at each other and it's funny now that I can laugh about it we as we got back to the hotel we are just exhausted it was hot and humid 
we got back to the hotel where it was uh, gratefully air conditioned and we dragged ourselves into the elevator and just stood there in silence and my sister turned and said this has been a terrible night but there's no group of people that I would rather spend a terrible night with than the people who are in this elevator right now and suddenly that realization made the whole evening turn from stress and conflict and disappointment and embarrassment into joy into a blessing we were all safe and sound and ready to crawl into our air-conditioned rooms and our clean beds and we realized in that moment that even when things are difficult that there are so many blessings to enjoy and I hope that whatever blessings are coming to you maybe they're in disguise maybe it will be years before you see the blessing maybe you'll never see the blessing this side of heaven but as believers we can rest assured that our God loves us and has his eye on us and has a plan for our lives that will be for good and eventually we'll have a chance to find out why we had these unusual blessings after sharing that story with a friend a few days ago she said well I guess you'll never rent another electric car and I don't know I did enjoy it I know there were challenges would I do it again I probably would because I learned so much from my little adventure that now I know what to look for and I know how to handle the things so that I don't get into an emergency so it ended up being a very good lesson I hope you don't mind my sharing my misadventures with you. Sometimes I get comments from people saying, I wish you would talk a little bit more at the beginning. And then I have people saying, oh, you ramble on for too long at the beginning. So I promise I will have episodes where I don't share quite so much. But when I have something meaningful in my life, I do like to share it with you because I think of you as my friends even though I don't know most of you and I'll never meet you until heaven but what I do enjoy is when I hear from you and whether that's an email or a review of the show or a message on Patreon or connecting with me on Facebook. All of those things are blessings and I love to hear from each of you. Now, after all of that, it's time for you, if you're not already asleep, to settle down and get ready to sleep. By now, I hope you already have your lights adjusted and the room the way you like it. That you're crawled into bed and settled into your favorite cozy sleeping position and that you have the covers just right. Now's a good time to just nestle your head into your pillow, maybe gently shake it back and forth, up and down, and feel how 
the muscles in your shoulder and your neck relax when you do that. And then join me in taking three deep breaths. One. Romans chapter 10. Brothers, my heart's desire and prayer to God for the Israelites is that they may be saved. For I can testify about them that they are zealous for God, but their zeal is not based on knowledge since they did not know the righteousness that comes from God and sought to establish their own they did not submit to God's righteousness Christ is the end of the law so that there may be righteousness for everyone who believes Moses describes in this way the righteousness that is by the law. The man who does these things will live by them. But the righteousness that is by faith says, Do not say in your heart who will ascend into heaven, that is, to bring Christ down or who will descend into the deep, that is, to bring Christ up from the dead. But what does it say? The word is near you. It is in your mouth and in your heart. That is, the word of faith we are proclaiming. That if you confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is with your heart that you believe and are justified, and it is with your mouth that you confess and are saved. As the scripture says, anyone who trusts in him will never be put to shame. For there is no difference between Jew and Gentile. The same Lord is Lord of all and richly blesses all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. How then can they call on the one they have not believed in? And how can they believe in the one of whom they have not heard? And how can they hear without someone preaching to them? And how can they preach 
unless they are sent as it is written how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news but not all the israelites accepted the good news for isaiah says lord who has believed our message consequently faith comes from hearing the message and the message is heard through the word of Christ but i ask did they not hear of course they did their voice has gone out into all the earth their words to the ends of the world Again I ask did Israel not understand first Moses says I will make you envious by those who are not a nation I will make you angry by a nation that has no understanding and Isaiah boldly says I was found by those who did not seek me. I revealed myself to those who did not ask for me. But concerning Israel, he says, all day long I have held out my hands to a disobedient and obstinate people. Psalm 110 of David a psalm The Lord says to my Lord Sit at my right hand until I make your enemies a footstool for your feet The Lord will extend your mighty scepter from Zion You will rule in the midst of your enemies. Your troops will be willing on your day of battle, arrayed in holy majesty from the womb of the dawn. You will receive the dew of your youth. The Lord has sworn and will not change his mind. You are a priest forever in the order of Melchizedek. The Lord is at your right hand. He will crush kings on the day of his wrath. He will judge the nations. heaping up the dead and crushing the rulers of the whole earth he will drink from a brook beside the way therefore he will lift up his head psalm 111 praise the lord I will extol the Lord with all my heart in the council of the upright and in the assembly. Great are the works of the Lord. They are pondered by all who delight in them. Glorious and majestic are his deeds. and his righteousness endures forever he has caused his wonders to be remembered the lord is gracious and compassionate he provides food for those who fear him he remembers 
his covenant forever. He has shown his people the power of his works, giving them the lands of other nations. The works of his hands are faithful and just. All his precepts are trustworthy. They are steadfast forever and ever done in faithfulness and uprightness. He provided redemption for his people. He ordained his covenant forever. Holy and awesome is his name. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. All who follow his precepts have good understanding. To him belongs eternal praise. The Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our debts, as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. In Psalm 2014, may the words of my mouth the meditation of my heart be pleasing in your sight. O oh Lord, my rock and my redeemer. And now it's time for you to fall asleep and sleep well. Sweet dreams. Good night.